I dropped cable, dropped the hardwired phone and security system bundle and went from $240 a month to $80 a month. But you lose the ability unless you get a a, a, um, a recorder of some sort, you lose the ability to record shows. And it's a bit in, unfamiliar in terms of navigating it all. And my wife won't have it up here. It's only my North Carolina house. <laughs> Well, and I'm curious, Bill, you didn't say what um, platforms did you decide to choose when you went to streaming? Did you decide to do uh, several of them? Or are you just doing Netflix or? It's fire. I used fire stick was the addition. And a smart TV. I think I think those a smart TV is required for starters, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> and then I added Fire Stick, which gave me better local station capability. And um, went to pure just internet as a purchase service. Got rid of everything else. So, you know, all my phones and my iPad and all those other devices still have interconnection but or conductivity does everybody else still have cable or yeah well yeah but i don't want to pay 240 dollars a month anymore <laughs> yeah. well i i got my wife a smart tv for just for her use for her room rather than the the one in the living room and I'm trying to get her used to navigating with it and we'll just see how it goes it's a big saving every month I got a very silly question no silly questions no such thing <laughs> what may, what makes with that dividing line between a non-smart TV and a smart TV like we have an Apple um tv apple tv you know little remote thing mm -hmm. um, then you have a smart tv yeah but so the difference between a dumb tv and a smart tv <laughs> is not I'm the dumb operator <laughs> a <laughs> dumb tv you cannot do any streaming platforms so you would only be able to access cable or a oh. DVD player or a VHS. Okay. Um, a smart TV con is connected to the internet and it Shoot usually has the apps yeah. on your, on the bottom of your screen that you could choose Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. Um, and you can take a dumb TV and make it smart by doing what Bill did, which was adding, um, a fire stick um to the it's a usb like thing you plug it in and it mm -hmm. makes it smart um they also mm -hmm. have chrome mm -hmm. sticks uh fire sticks is what amazon makes mm -hmm. chrome sticks is what google makes um there is a um apple tv box that sounds like you have kathy which connie and i also have um which is an addition um and well then makes it into a smart tv because yes. okay how but how, I do also, how do you record shows so yeah. you have apple tv box and then you have a um but my tv is also smart so the Apple TV gives me additional things on top of the smart TV. Um, Bill, your question about how do I record TV? I am a straight streaming device only. Um, my answer is I don't record any TV. 
all of the content mm -hmm. I'm watching is provided on some of the streaming platforms. Um, but I never grew up in that kind of TiVo phase where you recorded stuff. I would record things on VHS tapes, but then I skipped once VHS tape recordings went out of fashion. I never recorded any TV well, after that. Do you feel like you can get what you need in YouTube? If you've missed the show, you go to YouTube and get it rather than having recorded it yourself? Or it's on the streaming platform. Okay. So it depends on what content you're consuming is the question I would ask. Um, if you're watching, you know, things that are not available on rebroadcast, um, you, or you want it immediately, like you want to see the newest season of a show before it launches onto a streaming platform. I don't care if I watch it a year later. So you watch news. Well, if you're watching a show like British Baking or Murder in the Building or something like that, you can always go back and get previous shows, right? So that covers kind of another part of it. Depending on what streaming providers you have. So the the challenge with streaming is it can get just as pricey as cable, right? <laughs> yeah. Because depending on what you decide to do. So Netflix, you can get different levels, right? If you want ad free or, you know, you want additional users or things like that. Hulu is the same way. You can get the base fee with ads and then there's yeah. the next level. And they do packages if you want ESPN, or Disney Plus, but again, those are additional things. Um, or HBO, if you want the HBO one. Um, so it really depends right. what you want to do. Like YouTube has a YouTube TV um, that you can watch. Um, and it gives you certain packages. So you're like, oh, maybe that's all I need. So doing that research ahead of time so you know and you could be like me and most millennials that will rotate things right like okay we're gonna watch I'm gonna watch content on HBO for two months and then turn it off and then go to Hulu and watch content <laughs> on Hulu and then well do yeah and that makes sense because you use you get through most of the stuff you want to watch and then go to something else and then if there's new seasons, go back and do a month mm -hmm. of stuff. But if you have Amazon Prime, like if you're an Amazon Prime user, you're going to get Amazon Prime content as that package. Mm -hmm. So if you're a current Amazon Prime user, you can get all the Amazon TV content. The question is, if you like watching sports, and uh, depending on the news program you want to watch, um, depending on what news platforms you're watching, you can stream some of that on these platforms, um, but not everything. You you could also be like me that has an antenna added to the back of TV just to watch the local news sources. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like uh, streaming can be almost like a a la carte menu. Mm -hmm. where you start yeah. off at a low base mm -hmm. and if you're not mm -hmm. careful you start yeah. different mm -hmm. packages you, you're back where you start auto payments they you know set up like auto payments mm -hmm. and then they forget you have them running an, an a la carte menu at a very expensive restaurant mm -hmm. <laughs> very expensive yeah well and you could do Another trick millennials have done, which Netflix starting to fight back on, That's is true. sharing true. accounts, right? Like, okay, I'm going to get the Hulu account, you're going to get the HBO account, and we'll share accounts, you know, and have different profiles. Yeah. Who uh Amazon yeah. just or Netflix just did a policy where you have to be on the same network to do mm -hmm. that. Um, but my family somehow still has that 
we're, we all share a Netflix account and I'm still able to watch it, even though it, my parents are the ones that host it and they're in Hershey. I can still do it. Maybe it's because I check in in their house every month or two. So yeah. it recognizes that. I don't know. I don't know if you have that bill since you have two. Yeah, people. between here and North Carolina, I'm so far, they haven't cut me off, but they know the same device i guess they look at the mac code or something so they know i've already accessed them in a different place but the tv down there that doesn't work with that but so far not a problem but now netflix is uh, they're trying to latch on to some of the more popular football games and make people mm -hmm. subscribe to to watch sports mm -hmm. which used to be all free but or network standard network mm -hmm. and i don't know if you guys are wrestling people um right, that's what I'm but doing. in the last <laughs> week there was a big announcement that in 2024 or 2025 netflix will take over all the wrestling shows um that used to be on cable so they've signed a 30-year contract Ooh, um, 30 year. so if you want to watch <laughs> Wrestling. Is that pro is, is that, that professional, professional wrestling, wrestling or college? Yeah, WWE. Professional. Professional. Oh, yeah. It's WWE. Oh, no. It's okay. <laughs> on Earth. Well, I don't know how I did that. It's and, spoofing wrestling. And there are certain sports like that, like Amazon Prime has one night of football now. I can't yeah, remember. Thursday why. night. Thursday, Thursday night. night. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I don't watch sports, so I can't. <laughs> well, now well, since I was the mute, mm -hmm. since uh, I'm trying to get my partner over here to mute. There. <laughs> since I was the one who initiated this issue of um, streaming, etc., we had a presentation at our place two nights ago about cutting the cable or not. And this pretty much jives with what I heard there. I think I'm inclined to stick with Verizon. Yeah, well, that's that's another thing. For some of the, the stuff you try to access, they will ask you, do you have a Verizon account? And they make you log in using your Verizon account. So in some ways, cutting the cable in North Carolina didn't totally cut the cable because I'm taking advantage of the access I have here. Mm -hmm. So it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. well, and we where, we, where we live, we have basic cable is included. So our Comcast bill and we have cable, we have local telephone and we have internet and it's $75 a month. So, um, and we don't, we don't belong to any of the extra things other than Amazon prime and we have an Apple TV. Yeah. $75 a month. Wow. <laughs> Can I move come in? Come to Maris Grove. <laughs> come to Maris Grove. And you pay a lot more for everything else. I mean, you're still paying, but it's included. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We've got, by the way, hello, everybody. It's good to see you. Wow, um, this is big. Yeah, yeah. Oh, We've got to see you, Dan. hello, 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 hello. Yes. <laughs> We've got Comcast on demand and the thing um in we bundle, everybody bundles. We've got all that. The thing that I find particularly aggravating is things that used to be included in the um regular channels that we're paying for mm -hmm. one by one the things that are particularly interested in watching are pulled out and the move is then you've got to stream to pay extra to subscribe to get those and uh, i don't want to drop on demand and cable but the things we really want to watch uh, like if i want to watch uh, uh, Oppenheimer, that movie, that was going to be. Oh, that's, that's rented. Yeah. 
but sometimes you can pay 20 bucks for something just to watch something special you want to. Anyhow, they're getting you one way or the other, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, Lynn, um, uh, my question is, our main TV has cable on it, and upstairs I have a fire stick, took the cable off that one, and a fire stick. If I brought that fire stick downstairs and put it in, can we can we stream then on that TV? It's not it's not a it's a Samsung, and I don't know. I, it's not really. I guess it's not a smart TV because it's not real new. Um, and then just to go back and forth, you take it out and go back to your cable, and you mm -hmm. just so you just go into the source and change it because mm -hmm. that you, we'd like to have. I, in our living room, we have a streaming TV only, and the things that are on there, we can't get on our family room TV unless I use the stick, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, I have, we haven't tried that yet, but I want to. <laughs> you might need to log in to those accounts again. It might. Oh, that's a pain. There. <laughs> that would be the yeah. only caveat. Yeah. I wonder. A lot of times it carries over, but every now and then it doesn't yeah, I wondered if you have to do all that yeah. okay okay good to know thank you <clears throat> the nice thing about if you use fire sticks and things like that uh if you go to hotels and you want to watch content you can take those little things and plug them into the tvs oh. at hotels and it will you can use your own accounts rather than watching whatever the hotel provides oh, okay so if that's something that you do a lot of it's no uh, we don't <laughs> <laughs> one thing that was um, mentioned to us last night that I haven't heard yet is that a lot of these streaming um, companies offer free trials could be a couple days it could be a week it could be a couple weeks um, and that you can if you want to watch something particular you can according to this person you can get it you can watch it for free if you time it right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's a bit of a trap in that. that that's... I wondered. <laughs> <laughs> Often I have to remember to cancel want... for one thing. <laughs> yeah. And they'll want your credit card and all that to, to even get on the, the um, trial, the free mm -hmm. trial. So that they can keep charging you. Mm -hmm. And I guess they're counting on you forgetting about it or, or exactly. finding it so difficult to unsubscribe that you stay with it. Yeah, that's I did it. wonder about that. So we've never done it. <laughs> Hulu, I would say, is the best one that I found for mm -hmm. subscribing and unsubscribing and doing trials there because they do a pause button. So they might go, OK, you know, that was interesting. Let's pause this and it will check in with you in a couple of months and go, do you still want to keep this on pause or not? Well, that is interesting. But there's a lot of content now that are only available on certain platforms. Um, and yeah. to address something that the Wilcox said, renting movies is much different than, you know, when we block, Blockbuster is, was a thing. You can rent movies on Apple TV and Amazon and things like that that you might not get on cable or, you know, um, Redbox or something. But one thing they do now is early in the release you know they're going to charge you the full 25 dollars to rent but if you wait a month or two longer it goes down to like four or five dollars and yeah. then it might go down to even 99 cents or so so don't hurry <laughs> uh, i would say don't rush to see the barbie movie <laughs> even though they give you all the hype for it or oppenheimer <laughs> I wouldn't rush to see it any you. length of time. <laughs> the things they don't tell you, but you learn the system. Um, and also, the the cables are aware that people are cutting the cable, obviously. and they are willing to do some negotiating with you if you want to spend the time talking to some rep. Uh, I learned from somebody if you're talking with a person ask for the retention specialist you know you sort of say well i'm thinking of, of getting out of this and they'll try to do things to retain you 
You can also mention if you're Comcast, you can mention Verizon. I have, have done that. I can mention Comcast. I have Verizon, and I, I'll use the C word. <laughs> <laughs> you can always go to Comcast. They what they also make it very difficult for you to cut the cable, um, as well as far as if you do bundles. My brother uh, moved into my grandmother's house who had a bundle like that, and he just wanted the internet. He didn't want the landline and cable anymore. And they, they made it so difficult for him. It was actually cheaper for him to continue to use the bundle. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's something to be aware of as well, depending on what you want. But Plus, there's a whole password thing. Um, everything you do you need to bring to bring the password out to make the changes and so on and that's also mm -hmm. a, a hassle one mm -hmm. thing i don't need is another password so <laughs> yeah so Lynn, like anything there are pros and cons with having cable on or doing streaming or having a combination of both um but if you do decide to cut the cable, there are certain programs and things that they do do streaming like for people. If it's presidential, you know, um, what's it called? State of the unions and things like that. There are certain Super Bowl, things like that. They do like they let you stream on YouTube and things um, for free. So depend those big profile type things mm -hmm. uh, they're aware that those things need to be otherwise people won't tune in so when you nice. just mentioned youtube again mm -hmm. what is youtube tv so there are two different options <clears throat> when i mean youtube which makes it even more confusing for you so, <laughs> <laughs> so um if you take the state of the union type thing um, if you, you know, whenever that is, um, go to YouTube uh, and whether this is the YouTube app on your TV or it's the, um, the website on your computer, if you go, you know, I want to watch, um, the state of the union, um, and you'll find um, different networks. Typically, they're news organizations for um, things like this, for, or um, they might be ABC or something for the Super Bowl. Um, and there'll be a, like, a live event, so very similar to how you watch Westminster's live stream. Um, so you can pick which one you want to watch, and they'll have the live one at the top. Um, and you can choose. And then I'm one that for this kind of speech, I'll check and see what organization it is. Who do I want to watch this from? Do I want to hear the commentary from, you know, an ABC or Washington Post or The Guardian? Or do I just want to watch C-SPAN where I can just use the content without any commentary? So you have all those different options. Um if that makes sense. I see uh, on the top one, the Guardian showing up. How did you do something to show who, awesome. who pro did Is that? Um, so you could, if you know a specific thing, you want to watch the 2023 one and you want to watch it from the Guardian, you know. Okay, so you can request. You could go Specific. specifically to whatever that organization is, BBC or, you know, and it looked, and yeah, this one might have been the one that started auto playing when we first typed it in. Um, so whether this is, you, and if you guys are very tech savvy, you could pull it up on your phone so it's easier to type and then you could cast it to your TV, which is a whole <laughs> nother thing. Um, but well, we are tech savvy because we've been with you for three years. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. 
So um, <laughs> you could try cool. practicing that with YouTube, you know, whether that's Westminster's live stream or something else. Well, Lynn, but Kathy, the other thing you asked about was YouTube TV. Right. That's what I was is, getting ready to re ask is what you were just showing us is, is that YouTube or YouTube TV? Straight just any of it. Normal YouTube. Then there's YouTube TV, which is similar to Hulu with live TV, where you can, as, as you know, the bells were saying, try it for free. $62 a month uh, for your first three months. Um, and these are the different channels that would be covered in that content. So in, if you don't want to pay your money to Comcast or Verizon, you could say, pay it to YouTube, which is owned by Google. So you kind of trade in that big tech company versus Comcast or Verizon, none of which are great companies. Um, but these are the channels that you could live stream and save content, um, which I think, is this the one you use, Bill? YouTube TV? Uh, but, no. Okay. Uh, however, a regular Google, I subscribe to Westminster. Mm-hmm. So I can go into the, my subscriptions and go right. to back services or, and you cover almost everything of the Wednesday morning um, thing. Um, just about everything that, that gets um, offered is in, is accumulated um, in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a lot of things are recorded and then posted later. Right. Um, like, I like to watch John Oliver's um, show, but I don't want to watch all 35 minutes of it. I like to just watch the 20-minute main story he does, and that's available the next morning on YouTube. So, and you may want to do that with John Stewart, too. Yes, the Daily Show does the exact same thing. SNL does the same thing. Yeah. You don't want to stay up till whatever time. Although Peacock is where you can watch the full show if you want to watch that. But if you say wanted to switch your tape cable to YouTube TV, these are all the channels that you would provide. So Dan, you can see if oh these th this has got content here that I didn't used to have you know, on my cable that they took away and I want to watch some of these things. They get all these. You, you, you get all this on YouTube TV? Correct. All the stuff up here. And then if you want to, again, this is where they get you. You can do add-on networks. So you could, you know, decide to add the um, HBO or if you want to watch, you know, stars or show um show gun and paramount so there are different things and they, they do, do, do bundles if you're one that wants to do disney plus and espn say there's a bundle where you can do that so lynn with that what you were just showing the youtube tv does that have our local abc cbs nbc i think so pbs it has the local as well as all of the I other things. So. Okay. Does it have CNN and MSNBC? I know CNN was on there. Um, what is that? Wh what do you pay? Okay, what do you pay for that? And be yeah. Um. So this one, uh, would be, um, for, to start for free. It doesn't say how long it is for free. Uh, it's sixty three dollars a month for the first three months, and then after that, it is seventy three dollars a month. Okay. So, depending on what your current package is, um, it it'll depends. Okay. How does that jive with right now being Comcast on demand? On demand realize we're bundling with internet and with um, landline. Mm -hmm. 
that's, what that's would, where you have to research and contact, huh? you know, see what your current bill is. Comcast, then contact Comcast or Verizon and be like, you know, I want to get rid of this. And they'll tell you how much that fee would be. Um, and then you decide. What we do, we'd get, we'd, then you drop on demand, you drop cable. Mm hmm and you'd get this in place of it you're saying mm -hmm. well and i i scroll down to the plans um and there is unlimited dvr space so two bills question if you did say youtube you would get some dvr space if you're one that wants that basically <laughs> but it looks like nfl is a standalone bundle you would have to get two so but Hulu is another one that does um, companies um, that does the live TV feature, if that's what you are going for. I I find I record PBS shows more than anything else. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. uh, so so you record it versus using the PBS app and right. paying just for PBS. Well, I'm getting up here. I'm getting PBS as part of my cable right. uh, channel 12 mm -hmm. and 23 and 39, I think are all PBS channels, mm -hmm. but um, down South, I, I find it more difficult to get the PBS shows and I have no way to record them down there for whatever reason. Rosie. I use passport. I, you know, being a member yeah. of WHYY, I have passport, and I on my iPad anyway. I can watch that anywhere I yeah. go, and it's got all those shows or many of them that you want to watch. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I finally res resolved to or resorted to is yeah. buying passport. I, I like that. That's that's, that's what, what I would recommend. If then you don't even have to bother recording it. It's yeah. just all the contents there and you're supporting that particular organization that you support and value yeah. versus the big companies. Um, so, you know, recording is a great thing, but the thing about recording is then you've got to follow up and watch all the things you recorded. And, <laughs> you know, a lot, of times that, a lot of times that doesn't happen, you know, mm -hmm. so... And if you look at the PBS streaming stuff with the passport that Rhoda was talking about, there is a way for you to watch live PBS if you wanted to watch what was currently on there, too. So. And, and with passport, once uh, if they start a new season of a series that you like, once they have re um, shown the first episode then on Passport, you can see the whole season. Mm -hmm. So you can binge the season before anybody else does. <laughs> the, the, the other thing they do is they uh, they push you watching a new show and they'll give you the um, first two, one, two, three episodes mm -hmm. just enough to get you hooked. And then they <laughs> then they throw the rest of them on. You have to pay extra for them. Mm -hmm. You know, life isn't necessarily fear, is it? You know, they, <laughs> it's not the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. They know they can make money. They do that for The Office on Paramount TV. They'll let you watch the first season or two. Then, yeah, you have to pay. Going, going back to streaming, um, how do you find out what channels the different streaming services offer before you, or as part of your decision of whether you want to subscribe or not? Did you go to their website? Yeah. And then you just compare. I'm one that opens several tabs and then just compares. Okay, this is YouTube. This is Hulu. This is Amazon. Um, what all they have. Channels and costs and all. Mm-hmm. But Lynn, when you had that list up there, I think it was for YouTube TV, it just said you got ABC and NBC, but it didn't tell you is that your local 
NBC and your local ABC because I would want my local one to watch the news. That's what I was trying to decipher. Was that was that the case? How do you, I, how, yeah. How do you know which NBC okay. you're getting? Because I only want like the NBC that I can get the one out of Lancaster to get the local news information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's includes both. I think it's the national and the local, but I'd have to do more research. To okay. Do that. Um, and yeah, so it all depends. And if you just want the local stuff, you could, you know, put up an antenna like an old school and just watch it for free, you know, since it's a network one. An antenna? Yeah. Like, like, you know, Rabbit when ears. there were channels. Rabbit ears. <laughs> but um, before Rabbit we answer Connie's and or one question, I see Connie has a question. Um, we also, um, another streaming provider that if you wanted to do, you could add to your list of things to watch or add on. Since we have a couple of Chautauqua people on here. Mm -hmm. There is a Chautauqua um, assembly app that you can watch all of Chautauqua. You could subscribe to for what five bucks or something, and watch 45 all the five a year. Yeah, you could oh, watch really? the content that um, Bob and Jean are seeing during the summer live. So you can see Jean sing every morning. <laughs> yeah, well, not not me. solo. Uh, hopefully, you don't hear me singing every morning. <clears throat> but they also have archive you know, recordings if you want to go back to now watch. how would you get how would you how would you get this so with that fire stick you guys have you could download that app and then you would pay that you know monthly fee um and then watch that content hmm. But again, another what? username and password for you to remember. Another app. Yep. I'm appless. Yes. <laughs> um, Connie, uh, do you want to ask your question? <laughs> I did. Well, when you were screen sharing, there was something new. And I wondered if that's just from an upgrade of, of uh, Zoom. Because on the side of my screen were all of our faces, as usual. But then you were like a live little person mm -hmm. down on the lower left thing. It was just your face and head talking <laughs> on top of the screen share. I mean, it showed up on top of the screen share. So uh, AI. I think that was something new. Must be a new presenter mode. Yeah. I was going to say, I saw that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the first I'd ever seen that when you shared your screen. Exactly. Me too. That's what I was asking about. So not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do that again, Lynn, so we can look Probably. for it? Probably. Oh, it looks like there's three options I could do. Yeah, I see that one, too. They blacked oh, you out. There this you is look. one. There you are. Yeah, that, that's the one we saw earlier. Yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> and then there's another version where I'm much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> and then there's a third option. Um, oh, and I can add a wallpaper for me. Um, so, and then this is the last one I could do. Yeah. So if right. you wanted this one. Wow. So you have to be a presenter to do that. Yeah, it's under the share content screen. There's three okay. different options now. Mm. This is scary. <laughs> <laughs> if you had it, it features. Keep you on your Would it channel. happen? When would it happen if I started sharing my screen? If you hit that share content button, um, yes, and... I try that. Try it. Try it. I'm going to as soon as I can find share screen. There you go. Uh, and so on the left, oh, you're there's... right. You've got desktop, whiteboard. Uh, if you pick desktop, and then over on the right hand side for me. There's yeah. layouts. No, the options for video clips, but there's no, no, there's no options for layout. So it may, it may just be. Um, you must have an old update. It sounds like you need to do an update. Oh, well, yeah. 
I'll update and find out. <clears throat> I'm not to right this minute, but. <laughs> okay. Any other questions about the streaming versus cable before we move on to the next subject? Yeah. Um, That's <laughs> would um, say a Hulu TV or uh, um, or what was the other you had on there? The UT TV, those services. Would those be in lieu of the setup I've got now with Comcast cable on demand, or are some of them in addition to Comcast on demand? Do you know That's, what I mean? Yeah, you'd have to compare, you know, get your Comcast list and be like, okay, these are the channels I have on this, on Comcast. These are the channels I would get on, you know, Amazon or Hulu or YouTube and then compare and contrast. Wait, do, any of you, do any of you have cable and then something else, a, a, a service in addition to, do any of you have that set up? Yeah, I have Verizon and I subscribe to Netflix. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Of course, one of the other things they do, they give you Netflix or something like that, then they take it away. They give you something else, and then they take it away. They play this game back and forth, which just adds to the confusion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one other thing we've got in here a, a TV. It's a, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it, I don't know how smart a TV it is. It's not a real high IQ sort of TV, but it's, it's not the old kind, but it's not the newest form. It's got a nice picture we, we use and so on. My question is, um, I don't know how old it is. Maybe it could be eight years old, whatever. Is it color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to start? Are we going to start now? Is, this, is it widescreen or is it the, in the square no. model? No, oh, no, 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 no. Um, no, this is what my question is. Um, is it the TVs? You can buy new TVs, and they're pretty good deals in technology. So this isn't an old old technology, but is it such that if we invested in a new TV in here, um, are you going to get more with the newest technology and TVs? Is it worth the investment? Mm -hmm. It it's one of those. If it was purchased after 2015 or 2016, I think it's going to, yes, you could buy a new TV and it's probably going to have crisper images and things, but for the average person, yeah. it's not necessary. I would say unless you are having a buzzing noise when you turn it on or you find it really hard to pay attention to or you want a different size there's no reason to go out and buy the newest model um but when i i have found that the price of tvs has dramatically gone down even though we've had inflation the the price of tvs are going down and you're getting more um size wise it's very hard to find a small tv but yeah. it, um, but the quality is better so I don't don't rush out and get a new TV is what I guess I'm saying yeah. but if you do get one you'll have probably a nice experience or you want to if you want to watch a, a show in 4k because some shows are being filmed in 4k now mm -hmm. those new TVs will give you that feature it will dumb in down four. It's what? going to change the quality to a more dumb version on your older TV. But mm -hmm. why would you need to watch in 4K? Yeah, Lynn, I, our TV, I 
we we got it before we moved here and we moved in April of 2015. So it probably was November or December of 2014. But I I think that you're on cable, right? Whoever Patty's iPad is. <laughs> I don't know yeah. who you are. Um so you have a cable, I mean you have a Comcast remote. And if you just click on the Xfinity thing and you get all those different apps across the bottom, it's a very smart TV. <laughs> yeah. I find it, it it's as smart as I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, in other words, it, I don't think I get that much more for it, right. probably. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I know, I forget what model TV it was uh, a couple years ago, 2018 or 2019, Netflix stopped supporting a certain kind of TV model um, that, and being someone that streams, you know, those platforms only, it was enough that it made me want to go out and get a new TV. But if you're not watching Netflix, that doesn't matter or if you have a fire stick or an apple tv that's not an issue but i took i got a new tv and then took that tv and it's now in the production room in the church and it's still working great so it's still a great tv it's just enough like stop supporting something in it so we we've also had good luck with comcast in terms of when a comcast person has come out to the house they've been very helpful in that way they've set some things up and work with us in a very positive way so i'm glad to hear that that's a plus lynn i have a fire stick but i don't remember how old it is is was did they change or okay yeah until it craps out on you and yeah. okay <laughs> no reason to upgrade okay. um if you had a Roku device, I I know my family, my parents got a Roku device, mm -hmm. which made things smart. This was probably tw 2008, 2009. Oh. That, that died out on them. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was from 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a neighbor it. who has a Roku. Mm -hmm. And and the newer models of Roku, you plug into the TV. Theirs was so old that it was like a little teeny box, kind of like an Apple TV for those that have an Apple TV. We had something happen with our Apple TV last week. We didn't realize you have to charge up your remote. And I thought the whole Apple TV, in fact, I thought my whole TV had died because it, it suddenly my Comcast remote wouldn't work and it didn't work or anything else. And I had to Google stuff and then, oh yeah, there is a little thing on the end of it to charge it up. <laughs> plus, or batteries, plus the battery will run well, out. Well, there's no way to replace a battery on a, on an Apple um, remote. There Thank isn't. Thank you for sharing that, Connie, because I didn't know that we need to charge ours then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this little guy will, and as my as my son said, well, sometimes it gets stuck under a bunch of papers or something, and you lean on it, and you don't realize you're using the ba you're using up the battery, even mm -hmm. if you don't watch the TV that often, because we don't use go through Apple TV very often. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before we move on with anything? Are you going to get to the uh, pop quiz you gave us? Yes, I'd like to do that. And I know Sue Kelly would, uh, has a problem, too, but you guys don't have to stick around if you don't want to for her. Sue has a problem? Oh, no, not, <laughs> not Sue. Not a problem. But this is the biggest amazing problem I could possibly have figured out. So I'll just say... <laughs> <clears throat> Yes. So we'll do this first. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what caught your attention with this? Bank is singular. Mm -hmm. They address on front, not frost. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah John his Fung name is what? Frost, not Fault. Right. Mm. And it's coming from Joe Bonnie at Century Link. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. And and do you think the message sounds like the John Frost we know? No. No. There's no text, biblical text with it. And I don't know if you guys know his signature, but that is not his, what you find at the bottom of his email either. Right. Yeah, it's true. And Jerry is right next door to his office. Why would he email him? He'd just go next door. About finance things too, right? Especially. And, he, and, and most likely he'd go directly to Sandy, our finance director, if it was ah. a paycheck. And why would you name the subject Happy Wednesday if it's something to do with your paycheck? Wow. Yeah. Good. Ugh, that's awful. So, oh, so if you got an email like happy. this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do dumb subjects sometimes. Yeah. No, please, th Sue. No, I, I would do Happy Wednesday. If you ever get an email from me saying Happy Wednesday, no, I'll stop doing that. There you go. I'll stop doing that. Yes. Oh, no, no, don't. I use that too. I do that too, but I don't typically do it when uh, I'm emailing about financial things. <laughs> and you should never be emailing that kind of material to people. Personal data. Yep. Did we pass? You passed. Well <laughs> done. Proud of you. So good job, guys. That's it? Only one? I only have one today. Okay. I'll find another one, I'm sure, and make <laughs> you do another one. So, Bonnie, are you talking to us or someone else? Sorry. I sent one to you um, this week, and it was supposed to be from Leah. Oh, I didn't get that. I, well, I sent it to you and Barb, and Barb wrote back and said, I, I sent her what the what the return address was, which was obviously wrong, and she said she needed the whole email, so I forwarded the whole email to her before I um, put it in my spam folder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, she, was out of, she was out of town and wanted my help. Come on, guys. <laughs> you oh. got to be than that. <laughs> right. Yeah. You knew she was in town, right? Well, I knew it was she was in town, and I knew that she wasn't going to be wanting my help with what it was asking about, so... Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for indulging me. Mm. I got one a week ago from the from the dead. It was a former resident here who's who died about a year ago. Whoa. And I didn't go any further. Yeah. Wow. That, that one you showed us from John Front or her Frost or whatever <laughs> um, was uh, give me the background. That was that somebody. Do you know where that came from? What what's the what? You, what Orange. came? The backstory to that was Jerry came in my office and he said I got a really funny email from somebody from John Front. He's like, I don't know if John Hunt. I was like, well, send that photo to me. I'll show the Tech Time folks. But how could that have? How how could that have happened? What did? What do you think happened to? Um, who's who's out there that was able to do that? What happened? So does this email tell us that John's email was hacked? No, not necessarily. Well, More likely well, Jerry's, I would think. <laughs> no, neither of them were hacked. Um, somebody created a fake email. Um, wh whoever this Joe Bonnie is, um, they did some research on our internet. They went to Westminster staff page. They went, oh. There's an associate pastor named John who they accidentally mistyped his last name. Um, 
and they went the finding the church administrator is jerry mcshane i bet you know there is a possibility that john frost would email the church administrator that about his paycheck so they decided to create a fake email to this and emailed jerry's email which is provided on our website and they are hoping that jerry would email back and ask for that information and then uh not getting john frost involved at all so this kind of thing is called a spoofing email instead of a hack email so it's somebody one of these easy tricks that they are trying to get you so my <laughs> email got hacked and so it looked like uh the email was coming from me and the reply i forget and i had a so i had a verizon account and a google account and when i discovered i was hacked i had to go in also to my google account and shut that down because i forget exactly how it worked but that was a problem as well. Um, and how do they hack your email? So most likely what they did is there is hack like frauds, fraudsters that have software that they've built to go to Verizon.net or whatever. They type in a username and then they run thousand they run the software to test logins and it will go through and go you know is it one two three four is it password they go through the system and they finally land on whatever your password is wow. and then they can log in mm -hmm. and um, um, then you know send emails to all your contacts they can forward your emails to their email account so that yeah, that's what it was. Shut, if they shut, if you shut it down, they'll still get the answers because the, all your emails are then going to their account. Um, <sighs> so it, it's, it's one of those easy ways of, you know, it, of trying to get money from people. It's, lazy people that yeah are no, praying so Lynn is, it, Lynn is it true with AI that they'll be able to exponentially increase uh, their ability to spoof or get in like this I have not read that specifically but I would guess that is m most likely the case um, I would not be surprised by that and I'm going to guess that the wording of the emails are going to get better. Better going to not have right. as many typos and things like that. So be even more aware. Right now, you can, you know, it's typically people in other countries that are don't necessarily know the English language. Right. But with AI, there it's going to be easier for them to structure sentences and things better. So be vigilant uh, and my biggest suggestion to you is use very strong passwords because the stronger the longer the passwords the if you don't use specific words and you use kind of a combination of letters numbers upper lower characters it's going to make it harder for them to hack in they start with specific words and things and adding numbers one two three four at the end of those or things that more likely are the case um, of what it happens. I know I've shown you a chart before and I don't know where I saved it, so I won't pull it up, <laughs> but it had this, how strong passwords were, mm -hmm. um, depending on the number of characters and things you use. Mm, right. Yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the concept of emailing, the more we discuss this, um, does it make you less confident in using email as a form of communication that you want to continue using? And do you think that 
people overall are going to be less apt to want to email. That is a very good question. Um, I would say with any form of technology, they're going to start doing this kind of criminal behavior too, right? Um, email has been the most, uh, has been around the longest. So it's easier for them to do that. Um, and people are more aware of it happening. Now you're seeing, and you probably have been aware of this more and more, you're getting these kind of uh, spammy emails via text uh, with, you know, fake shipments and things or mm -hmm. log into accounts and different things. So they're just moving from one platform to the next. They're going to follow you, whatever that new technology is that we decided to use. So it's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So the only way to stay away from it is not to use the internet at all. Is texting safer or emailing safer? I would say the most safe is to verbally call people. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> and snail mail. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you know, you're talking my game here, but... <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind people that you have a phone. I have to remind people you can actually talk to people on that sort of thing because people don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I That's just the... no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. I don't know if any of you guys have been watching the January series that Calvin University um, has been doing that Leah uh, has introduced Westminster to. Yesterday's presentation talked about, she was talking about listening and how valuable listening is. But one of the things she said, the, the speaker, I forget her name, was saying that um, connection um, is, you, you don't have connection when you text people because there's not a real time connection happening. You can answer as you wish. You can edit your text before you send them. It's not a real life dialogue and things. And uh, that's most likely why teens right now have the mental health issues that they have and they feel so lonely and isolated. They can't verbalize that's what it is. But uh, the speaker was saying that that's, that's what they're missing, that real time interaction and relationship and i get. i was yeah. able to watch part of it and the word she uses it's not a true form of communication that hit me it's like texting is not a form of communication it was like yeah well there was something this morning on tv there were on uh, serious radio they were saying that young people are spending as much as three to eight hours a day on their cell phones and on social media. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We, we have, well, I downloaded WhatsApp quite a while ago, but we have a, a niece who lives in France calling her all the time, uh, gets expensive. <laughs> And her parents live here at Maris Grove. And so we have been back and forth. It is a way of communicating information quickly. Mm -hmm. And when she was when she was here in the States visiting for a month, for me to send her an email, I had to go to Paris and come back again. And she'd get it two or three or four hours later, whereas with WhatsApp, she got it right away. So there there are some advantages and some times when it's really a valuable thing to do. Oh yeah. It's very, yeah, I'm not putting it all down except yeah. there's. Uh, I'm looking at the things you can do now that. Oh, of course, uh, yes. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely amazing, but like anything else, it gets um, out of control. Yeah, we text our kids and say, "Is it a convenient time to call you or call us when you're free?" You know, just so we don't have to interrupt their work day if we have something to say. 
there are different practices and kind of social cues, right? When regards to email versus texting versus oh. calling versus FaceTime. So it's just figuring out what platform to use right. for that current communication style of what you want to do. And we could probably well, spend a lot of tech time on talking about the differences of what. Right. Yeah. But what, talking what at, FaceTime. Talking at talking on the telephone, um the generation beyond us talking on the telephone is not part of their way of life anymore. Um, a lot of them don't even use the phone to talk. Mm. It, that makes me sad. <laughs> I think people, because people aren't communicating in that way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why don't you change that, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm one that hates talking on the phone. I I dread and I think it was you know growing up and having to call landlines and not knowing who was going to answer the landline I feel much more comfortable now you know when I know it's a cell phone and I'm going to get the person that I'm you know calling specifically but I think that's something about my generation we all hated that where you guys grew up in a time where that was the only way of communicating right. so um party yeah. lines <laughs> yes yeah. and we're used to party lines it was more yeah so give me a it's call someday and we'll talk about it <laughs> <laughs> Good, Dan. well sorry to leave you guys on a depressing note um, <laughs> but do i'm happy to chat with you about your problem too, if you want to do it, mm -hmm. but I don't want to keep people who have time commitments too. So. Thank you, Lynn, very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lynn. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks it Lynn. Nice, it was nice to see each of you again. <laughs> and nice to see more you over the and, and, and and the years. years. Yeah. Very, very good Come to back see again, you. Dan. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, yes. bye bye. Lynn, could I just yeah. ask before I jump off? Um, yeah. I do have a question about the one password. Mm -hmm. When would be a convenient time to talk with you? <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't yeah. be shouldn't be long, but call yeah. her on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, whenever you like. Just well, you call me when it's convenient for you since you're the one that's working and I'm not. <laughs> okay, maybe next week sometime once oh. the annual report's done. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that um, uh, just in brief, I'm doing better. I was uh, I needed to do an upgrade, and while that was happening, I was asked, "Do you really want to delete this file?" And I accidentally clicked yes, so I no longer had access to all of my save files and email and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So I did call Apple after I calmed down a bit and a very nice woman from Alberta, Canada spent five hours walking me through what I needed to do. And in, and in addition to what I needed to do, which she found was to um, uh, get rid of my MSN um, old email. email and change the password on my up, uh, you know, change a uh, password on my current email that I use all the time and then change it on all three devices. And that took some time because she, we couldn't share screens because of what I had done for a while. And I was doing the phone, but I can show you on screen, but the actual mess that I started of not being able to access files still exists. Hmm. Yeah. So let's screen share and we'll look at it. Okay, I'll do that. Um come on, screen share. Did that work? Not quite. Do you have to hit the blue share button? Um that isn't there anymore. 
And okay. I don't. Go. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Just took a second. Uh, um, so uh, I'm going to move you for a minute. Okay. Uh, so I can demonstrate this way. Mm -hmm. Um, I was using this. Mm -hmm. And when I went to get anything from there, it wasn't able, I wasn't able to access it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little larger. Mm -hmm. um, the screen actually looks a little different. Everything was grayed out. Mm -hmm. um, then I did a start new. What's that? Safe start new. Can't open because original item can't be found. Okay, so that was everything. Mm -hmm. So my only solution was to, I started this one mm -hmm. and I started brand new little things. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, it was demonstrated how I could go to um, something that I can't access. Mm -hmm. I forget how, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. At any rate, all my files came that were gone mm -hmm. and I could click on one file and drag it to my desktop and then change the file it was in. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, I'm almost delighted that I don't have to see any of my old files. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm starting afresh. I have a new life. I, mm -hmm. I can just use these, um, whoops. Uh, what am I doing? Stop. Uh, mm. I don't know why it's beeping and not moving around. I say it would hate you. It just hates you. Yes. And um, and I did change my password, and I believe I saved it. And it's a very short, stupid password. Mm -hmm. But I could call Apple about that or or change password. I think I know how to do that. But mm -hmm. um. Oh gosh, is there? So when you went to, so you deleted it from trash completely. Um, no, so that okay button. Get rid of that okay button. Okay. Um, let me go to trash. Come on. It, that's where they were. Okay, so, um, so they were in trash. And there's a few of them, but when I went to open letter writing guidance, whatever, uh, oh, there had been nothing there. Mm -hmm. And I can't, oh, see, there it goes again. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you won't be able to open it because it's in trash. Okay. What I want to know is if you hit that back arrow and you click on like presentation one, don't open it just click on that and then hit command a and if you drag it say to your desktop or de documents maybe documents thank you yes let's do documents is that good yep and it wants your password for when you log into the computer Now, if you open something, does it let you? Yes. Yay. So basically now I have a history of everything that I ever did in in um, documents and I don't really care if it stays there. Mm -hmm. I really do. But um, I wanted to say that uh, where's Finder? My Finder. Um, Oldest. So, yeah, well, there we go. See, this was something, uh, these I never really used. Mm -hmm. um, I never put anything in them. Mm -hmm. uh, start. So how would I eliminate looking at them? 
So hit that OK button. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's hidden. Yeah. OK, there we go. So right click Save Icons or one of those, one you want to get rid of. Remove from sidebar. And then click one of the next ones. Remove from sidebar. And then, yeah. And then this one would have had all the things I, I went to my desktop. Mm -hmm. Am I still okay in my desktop or did I mess up something? No, well, there it looks like you've got a bunch of good stuff there. Um, so this is the stuff you want in um, that safe folder? No, I think, um, yeah, well, kind of. Um, whoops. What I would like to just proceed with mm -hmm. is to know for myself that, okay, from January 20th onward, I've got a fresh mega folder, I'll call it. And if it's possible to get what's in desktop to that safe folder, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure it's as bad as I think it is. Yeah. Um, it's stuff's there. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like it's sinking. What does that mean? Do you see the, there's a little circle there with like a down arrow? So next to the word September Chronicle for Conrad, DOC. Okay, hold on. I'm going to move you. Yeah. Okay. Do you see the names of the files? I see September Chronicle for Conrad, you know. Yeah, so next to the word docs and yeah. before the word August 5th, there's a little like, like a little recycle button and a error message. So it looks like it's trying to sync that file and download it to you. It's up in the cloud. So the little round thing uh, I see, right? I'm putting my cursor to it. Um, that's double look, double click, click on that. Hmm? Try double clicking on that. Did it open? Sinking. So it's still sinking. Oh, there. All right. Where's this? But how do you know it's sinking or do you just know it's sinking? Can I visually? You highlighted. Take your cursor and put it over that recycle, but don't click on it. Uh, to your right a little bit. A little bit to your left. Next, right there. Oh, it had it there earlier. There you go. Sink. Oh, oh, oh. It's telling me that. So if, and then if something's super important and I actually want to move it, like a PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, if, do you think I could find that easily by opening just the PowerPoint app and then saying, this is the one I really want to move? You can, or you could drag and drop it into wherever you want it to go. Let me just do one with you and then I think, and then change the stupid short password for at least my PC mm -hmm. or something. Okay, so an arrow back. Well, I really don't have to do that. I have to go up here. Let me close this. Um, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So were you able to successfully do the update that it tried to do that caused the whole fuss? No. Oh, also, it, it it was a file from Apple, I think. Hmm. Like it was Apple asking me. Hmm. But um, here's the presentation. Okay. Open. Oh, I have to move you again. Open. Okay, that's my little message. Mm hmm Okay. Can so, you go to that little thingy and scroll over to the right? What's that little thing with, yeah, what's that say? It has a yeah, no, square what, and an arrow and it says share, yeah. Yeah, go to the three dots. 
click on it. Show in Finder. Oh, wow. Okay. Never mind. It's one of those. I want to know where you saved it. Oh, you know what? It's user Sue Kelly library mobile documents trash. So it's in your trash on your phone. Whoa. Really? Okay. Or so, on your iPad. Okay. So I don't want to keep you because it's crazy and I am not dying for this right now. Right. But in a couple weeks, either in tech time or just after tech time, if we can do a you know, I'll get my phone and my iPad and everything here. Yeah. Then okay. But but, but do you see underneath the these words um, under the document? It has like Microsoft HD user Sue Kelly desktop. User Sue Kelly, I have um, library. Library. Mode. Yeah. So mode. under each document, it tells you where it is. So that's ah. the path of where that document is located. Microsoft HD is your hard drive. And then it's under your user, Sue Kelly. And then uh -huh. the second one down is desktops. The first one is in your documents. So that way you can trace where it is. So you can go see why am I having issues with it? So it looks like the one we have highlighted is having issues because it's in the trash folder. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm trying to follow. Let's let's save that one for another time. Okay. So if you go up to like the first one, theoretically it's going to open. Okay, that was a test one that I couldn't make. Yeah. That's in your document. So that's why it opened. Okay. So I'm going to close that. And go back to, oops, go to, um, so documents, desktop forms. Okay. So, um, so this one says it's in PowerPoint. Yes. So if you double click that, theoretically it should open. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what? It's in that shared folder. That start oh. new, save shared. Yeah, oh. which is having issues. Yeah. Okay, so then um, my password is so bad. I did capital P-O-I-U-Y directly across. Mm -hmm. And then 1937, which is like only what? Nine characters. Um, yeah. And... I've written out one that, that I'm sure, you know, I would never remember, but if I save it somewhere, I'll, I'll be able to do it. And I'm wondering if I can save an Apple password in the settings, little password key. Mm -hmm. You should be able to. Okay. Do you, could we change, if I change my PC password, should I then change my, or that automatically change my iPad and my phone? So your laptop password is going to be different than your phone and your iPad. If you change your Apple ID, that would happen across all three devices. Oh. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I think for some reason the Apple ID didn't show up right away. Maybe it was the syncing thing, Possibly. but now I think it's they. Sh it should be all the same, mm -hmm. and it is my um, address for my current email. I was told that is the best way to have your um, name. You know the because if something happens, it, it'll it'll update or it'll do something the correct way because it knows. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I think all three of mine are um, my uh, my um, uh, actual address for uh, Gmail. Mm -hmm. 
but it's that new pooey one <laughs> that I'd like to make stronger. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Okay, so how do I do that? So the PUI one's your computer or the Apple ID? I'm trying to remember. Um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so settings. So mm -hmm. look at you. What? Yeah, you know I work in here like. somewhere. Yes. So I'm going to move you again. And then sign in in security. And password. Change, change okay. password. It looks like you changed it on January 20th. That seems about right. If uh okay. if if that was yeah, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. So you can click on that. And it wants your current one. All right, this is where I'm praying. Oh, I hope I wrote it down. I mean, we were five hours on the phone. Bless so, you. Your brain must have been dead. She did speak slowly for me. That's good. And it got slower and slower as we went. Okay, so, uh, okay. What happened? What do you mean? I typed in my password. <laughs> so change password. Hit that again. Let's try this again. Okay. So this is your password for your computer. Okay. And then it wants you to type your new password and verify it. And we can definitely save. You're going to have to sign into your iPhone and iPad again. So you're going to need to remember this password. I don't want to sign in right now to my iPad or. So don't okay. sign out. Yeah, let's just do this. Okay. So you changed that. So now you'll go to the um if you go to that search bar at the top of your screen next to your clock i'm sorry next to my clock at What's the top the at the very top bar there's yeah. the battery icon the wi-fi my face oh. might be over top of it there's a search type in yes uh, yes key uh keys no or not keynote um keychain there you go oh, okay double click that right here yep open passwords so they're locked they want you to unlock uh, by typing your so here you are going to add one so in that search button at the top scroll up above security recommendations there's a little plus arrow next to that search bar right okay. there right here right there click that add new password and then you're going to type in under website you can set or uh, go up to the top next to the key there's a title uh -huh. and you'll type in there Apple ID and I would put the date. I don't know how to spell Apple. Apple oh. ID. And I think today is um or January 20, you know. Yeah, oh okay. 2024. Which I still can't believe we're in 24. Oh, I know. And then you'll go down to username and password and type in your username and password. I just, yeah, I just um, hit enter and it hopped down to a highlighted add password. So hit that add password button. 
cannot add password. To save a password, you need to and type in iCloud.com. I C L O U D dot C O M. Now, does it let you? It looks like it. It has done on the bottom right. Um, you know, I have my username. I have dots across for for or uh, for password. Again, it says change password on website, but the bottom says done. 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 Okay, now I have the password screen, I guess, and mm -hmm. I can click on Apple ID, right? Mm -hmm. You've already done changed your Apple ID password. Yeah, but if I if I go in there, can I see it or now? Your like password? If, yeah, like if I double click and highlight over password, will it show me the password? No, you would have to go to key keychain.x or screen share again and I can show you. Ah, uh, screen share, okay. Can I close what I'm looking at? I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can move it. Okay, Wait, where's the zoom, the zoom icon on your dock? I can't see. Okay, now I found it. The dots. A uh, screen share. Okay. You can see me? See it? I can see you. I can't see your computer yet. Ah, there you go. Okay. Okay. So this is where you can, if you, this is where you'll see your passwords, if you need your passwords. So if you, yeah, scroll down to um, Apple ID January 20, um, then you can highlight over those dots and it will show you your password. Oh. That's where you would have to copy it or check on it before you go and change your password. And and I would change my password on my iPad and phone, maybe. I don't have to. Yeah, it, at some point it will ask you to. Okay, so I'm going to hit done. I'm going to close this. Mm -hmm. Go back here. Mm -hmm. I have my little Januaries that open. Mm -hmm. And now I totally forget how I saw, was it by doing iCloud to see what the the um, address of where my file was? I was in PowerPoint. Oh. So when we were in PowerPoint, okay, so would the same thing happen then if I go to Word? Most just, likely, yeah. Okay, let me just real quick do that. Okay, yep. all right. I learned a lot and I'm just, um, uh, in a way, really, I feel like I'm starting a whole new life, but there's just a few that I want to get. So if I do the drag to my desktop, I could do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good for now, Lynn. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I couldn't help you this weekend. Anytime you just can't help, you just can't help. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I should have called Apple in the beginning anyway, but I was so panicked that I, I I just could I could barely talk. I mean, it was just the worst feeling. But yes. thank you. Yes. Yeah. It, that that gut reaction, that like immediate response. I get it. But I'm glad you even thought to call. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Proud of you for that. Actually, I think it was one of my neighbors who's 90 plus years old and very savvy with her computer who said you know you can just call apple <laughs> their their customer support's great i think yeah i got to a good person yeah it just it sometimes takes longer than you want okay well you're good yeah good everything is how's physical therapy going